this video, I will give you a short overview of NEAT, the Nested Environmental Status Assessment Tool that has been developed by the DEVOTES project. The name tells us about the purpose. It's an integration platform of the work done in DEVOTES and it should be useful for stakeholders in need for environmental assessment. Although the software is for environmental assessment, the current implementation does biodiversity assessment. And NEAT is not an indicator in itself, but is a software that uses the information from the indicators in order to do an integrative assessment across those indicators. It is primarily targeted at the Marine Strategy Framework Directive and uses different features like spatial assessment units um, to calculate a value for the biodiversity status. The current implementation is based on several principles. First of all, we have spatial assessment units defined, which are areas within a larger marine area, for example, that can be subdivided into different parts. And all these parts are forming a nested hierarchy. So on all these different individual spatial assessment units, you can do an individual assessment or you can aggregate those together for an overall assessment. Starting with the spatial assessment units, these are themselves connected to a hierarchy of habitats. And every habitat can be connected to any number of spatial assessment units and vice versa. What we do is actually that we zoom into the ecosystem coming from the spatial assessment unit, a region that we define geographically. We then look into the habitats that are within this spatial assessment unit. And within the habitat, we have the ecosystem components, typically biological components. And those then again are assessed using indicators. So what NEAT uses in order to do an assessment is always a combination of a spatial assessment unit, a habitat, an ecosystem component and an indicator working on this. Here's an example or several examples where you can see that you can mix those different entities together. You can have more than one indicator per spatial assessment unit. You can have more than one indicator per ecosystem component and so on and you can combine them freely or rather in terms of what you need to assess and what are the important entities that you want to look at. Then need does a weighting of those combinations. And the weighting is on the important entities of the assessment, on the spatial assessment units, on the habitats. It's not on the indicator, because the indicator as such is not our interesting entity. It's the actual things we see out in the sea. This makes sure that no single indicator can dominate the assessment. In the end, the need value is a weighted mean of all those indicator values assigned to certain spatial assessment units and the combinations, habitats and ecosystem components, and it is expressed as a value between 1 and 0, 1 meaning kind of reference condition, 0 meaning the worst possible condition, and in between we have divided this into five equidistant status classes. In terms of the MSFD, the threshold to the good environmental status would be at 0.6. So the need software that we develop within Devotes is a flexible tool for doing a complete need assessment according to those principles. It automatically calculates the final uncertainty on the need value 
based on the standard errors that you define or input together with the indicator values. NEAT already includes over 500 indicators predefined. It has a user-friendly interface and we're trying to hiding the complexity of the calculation from the users. Nonetheless, you can customize, customize each assessment and it can also be used for other types of assessment. It is not restricted to biodiversity assessment. You can get the software for Windows and the Mac OS um, operating systems at the address that you can see down here. Of course, it comes with a manual and, like it says here, tutorial videos are planned and this here is the first in a series of videos explaining how to work with the software. When you open up the software, it opens with a small window, giving you some menu items here and not much to see in the first place. We wanted to keep it simple. This short overview is about the version 1.2, which is the current version. So when you do a biodiversity assessment, you click on the relevant menu item and it will give you the opportunity to either do a new assessment or access one of the pre-existing assessments. Looking into a pre-existing one, it will open a new window where you can see on the right a list of those combinations of spatial assessment units, habitats, ecosystem components and indicators, a value for the indicator for that combination and a standard error for this indicator value. And this is a list of different examples how this can look like. In order to add some new data to this, you just either pick from those predefined indicators here, assign them to a habitat, in this example abundance of selected fish species and cephalopods might mean you are looking at the benthic habitat in the northern sea and it's about fish and you add it and the entry gets added. Then you enter the value like 25 of the indicator and an error value like for example 8. Then you need to define a classification which tells the system what status is reflected by a value of 25. This has been done for the pre-entered um, values here. You can remove such an entry by clicking on the remove button. And you can edit those indicators, their name, their assignment to MSFT descriptors, the habitats they are used in, the ecosystem components they are used for, and of course the different classifications. When you have done so, you click on do assessment and NEAT calculates the assessment and presents it in a table right here. For every spatial assessment unit, you get the NEAT value according to the scale from 0 to 1 in five classes, with blue entries in the high status, green ones in the good status, yellow ones in the moderate status, orange ones in the poor status, and red ones in the bad status. You also get some indication of the certainty of that value by means of the propagation of the standard error you entered for the indicator value. Every one of those bars is the uncertainty or the, rather the certainty that um, the indicator falls into the bad, the poor, the moderate, the good and the high status class. So in this first row, the uncertainty tells us that it's quite probable that the good status is actually the good status, but there's actually a higher probability of this being only the moderate status. In other cases, like with those very low values, it is very sure that the bad status is the correct one. So depending on the indicators that go into this 
spatial assessment units, we may end up with different kinds of uncertainties. And you do not only see the value of the spatial assessment unit as a whole, but also you can see what the status is for the different ecosystem components within this spatial assessment unit. You can change that to look at the habitats instead, if you want to. And every time you change something in the configuration of the biodiversity assessment, say for example the weightings of the habitats or the spatial assessment units or some filter, NEED will automatically recalculate the results for you. And when you're done, you can save the results as a report for further reference. If we close the assessment and look at what a new assessment is, we have pre-configured some assessments here, which are configured towards a special regional, regional C, allowing you to enter some specific habitats or some specific spatial assessment units in the regional C. You can also do a completely custom one, where you yourself choose which spatial assessment unit, which habitats, and which ecosystem components you want to use. And if you want to use something else altogether, you can also do that. Because the spatial assessment units defined in the system are not fixed, but you can in fact add your own spatial assessment units and your own complete hierarchy. And you can do the same for the habitats. You are not restricted to the ones we are giving here, but you can define your own habitats and your own hierarchy of habitats. The same is true for the ecosystem components and for the indicators. Although NEED comes with a large list of predefined indicators, you can define your own indicator. Looking into the existing indicators, you will see that there is a lot of data or rather metadata already behind those different entries. For some indicators, it's more information. For other indicators, it is less information. But this is already pre-configured for you, so you can use them. And the only thing you have to do is every time to give the classification. And if you have done that, you can use the indicator in your assessment.